I got a little helper today. Hi. Hello. Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be working on some crafty projects based on my family's favorite TV show, which happens to be Bluey because we have a kid. So without further ado, let's start with a tote. The idea for this tote is to make it in that really sketchy design from the escape episode because I thought that was such a creative and cute way of uh, portraying the characters. And so for this design, I'm going to put the whole family at the front and then on the sides, I want to use the hooray and outrageous. For that to work, I'm going to be using acrylic mixed with a textile medium. I've used it before in Halloween, but I don't quite remember how it turned out. So let's just hope for the best. So what you do is you put two parts, this textile medium and one, and one part acrylic. Now let me show you the tote that I got. I got this from Amazon and it was a set of two totes. They are grocery totes, so they have divisions inside of it. And they're not very long, but they're chunky boys. They do hold a lot of things. And just for reference, this is my sketchbook on top of it. So inside of it, it has this little compartments where you can put things or rolled up things. So I think I'm gonna use them in the summer for towels because I do have the microfiber towels that can fit quite nicely in there and on the sides it does have pockets so for water bottles or anything else that i need to put in there that's going to work quite nice and now for the design itself i think i want to put the design right here and the words on each side I noticed that my sketchbook is the right size for the design itself, so I had plans of sketching it on the sketchbook and then just transferring it over. Having said that, I promptly realized that that was a horrible idea because the sketchbook itself cannot bend backwards, so I would have to rip off the page for me to transfer the design, and I didn't want to do that. So I decided to do something differently. So I got my trusty iPad and I collaged the characters and the poses that I like. And when I started to transfer it to a paper, it just started moving everywhere. So I did this registration mark so that I could just go back to the original pose. And usually that's not a problem because I'm a lizard from outer space that can't produce her own heat. But apparently today was a really good day for me because I was apparently warm and technology thought that I was not dead. So that's great. Usually I'm too cold for any technology to recognize that I'm alive, so that's fun. I decided to export the picture so that I didn't have to worry about the zooming in and out and just double checking the sizing that I want it to be. And that worked quite well. After getting a, a nice blank sheet of paper instead of the one that has the registration marks, I still had a couple of issues with some moving around, but Overall, it, it did the job. And so once I transfer that onto the paper, it was just a matter of getting it from the paper onto the, uh, the canvas tote. And I had a few ideas for that. They are washable markers from my kid's pencil case and they wash out. So I'm hoping that if I do the outline with this and then I just put the acrylic on top and I won't have issues with that. So wish me luck. To make sure that the paint doesn't bleed through to the other side, I'm just going to put a bit of cardboard in between and just secure it with my chip clips. I think that's what they're called, right? I got them from my self-made advent calendar and I use them on the daily. They're, they're great. Once I was ready to transfer, I I was second guessing myself whether or not I wanted to have it in the corner or in the middle but I think I'm just gonna go with my my first thought and just put it in the corner I, I think that's what I, I like the best so after rearranging some of the cardboard inside just to make sure that it covers all the surface I started to transfer Now, the only thing about this method is that I wasn't quite sure how I felt about the chunkiness of the lines. But it didn't work, so 
that was a bummer. That was about the time that I started questioning my life choices. But that didn't last long. Because here comes carbon paper to save the day. Good old trusty carbon paper. So after using the tried and true method, I just had to press really hard to make the lines transfer over. And then after that, I had to go over them with the pencil itself as well. And that took a while, but I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. It is kind of interesting to think about doing what is essentially fun art of a kid show. But it's just so heartwarming. I first stumbled upon that show on my own, even before I had kids, and I thought it was <laughs> the coziest little show ever that I would watch it just to, like, as a feel-good uh, sort of show. And then when I had a kid, it just, it all made sense. And now for the painting. I didn't get the colors quite right, but I got them close enough. I, they're a little more vibrant than they actually are on the books that I have for reference, but I don't mind that. I, I, I do like them to be a little bit brighter. Because it doesn't have to be perfect, it just it is a handmade design, so it's not not supposed to look professional. Well, it can look professional if you spend a lot of time in it. I just had an idea in my head and I wanted to make it a reality and here's me just giving it a try and just testing the colors and just comparing the colors just to make sure that they are similar enough. And once I made a batch of colors, I had to work on it uh, and paint with it before starting the next batch because acrylic does tend to dry faster. So even with the, the textile medium, it does dry quite fast. So I had to be pretty quick about that. And the, the medium itself, like the, the textile medium, makes things kind of goopy. It makes it like rubbery and flexible, more viscous and a little bit more watery than regular acrylic and when it gets in contact with the fabric it kind of soaks in but then stays and then finally by doing the outlines everything started coming together and it's just so cute it turned out so adorable i'm so proud of this one i decided against the outrageous in one side because it was a little bit too long but i'm pretty happy with the hurry now onto the next project. The next project is a glass mug and this one was a spur of the moment project, but I started having troubles from the beginning. As soon as I loaded the machine, it just didn't load properly. It might have been because I was using just one hand, but who knows? It's probably because I was using just one hand, but then it worked so everything was fine. But then soon after, the hole where you hang the mat from it started catching on the lip of the machine of the cry cut so that was making the whole mat jump a little bit and i was really scared that it was gonna mess up with the design but it didn't so that's great and on to the whittling part the plan is to use the vinyl as a stencil for the cup putting etching solution on top of it and then after a few minutes it's just going to show up as a different texture on the glass but first, let me show you the inspiration of this. This is my kiddo's favorite book. And I think it's his favorite book because I do the voices like, I dropped my beans. And of course, Jeremy's here. And, and I think he's one of my favorite gnomes because that little dude has been through tons of different games and tons of different situations. And he's still going even after being broken. So I just find him so inspiring. It's really funny when I looked at the, the official website for Bluey, uh, they do have a part for gnomes uh, and it says that Jeremy is an accident prone gnome, which is so true. I noticed that while I was doing this, that it just lives up to its name. Because this will become a stencils, I don't need the outlines per se. That's why I'm touching them so much. Usually you don't want to get this sticky part um, dirty. But after it was out, I realized that it was really cute and I just wanted to keep it. So I put it on the back of my sketchbook. Having said that, I had so much trouble with the eye 
it just would not go to the right place and it is looking so cute and it makes me smile every single day when I see it and now he's looking all handsome over there look at you boop now if you've ever whittled before you know that the letters are the worst thing to do it's so tedious and everything was just moving everywhere and so I came up with this brilliant idea and I thought myself so clever for it my idea was to put the design on the transfer paper and then start whittling from the back so that way all the small pieces will stick on the transfer paper and then I can just whittle away the bigger pieces that I don't need and I thought it was brilliant and then looking further into uh, into that hole I found out it's a very common technique that even the beginners know so yeah <laughs> Now putting the stencil on was also kind of difficult because it got stuck at the top and oh my goodness I just had to commit at that point because uh, there was no replacing it. I mean I could have done a new one but uh, no. So don't worry about it I know it looks a little janky but as long as the outline itself it's properly sealed the solution is, is not going to bleed through so that's good. <laughs> I got this etching liquid from Amazon and it says extreme danger so just to point that out if you want to do a similar project please read the label closely and use gloves and a mask because it's it's nasty stuff that you don't want to have in your system it is not a craft for kids so after putting a generous amount of this icky thing on the glass, I waited the suggested time and then I gave it a rinse. And here it is. This part was pretty satisfying just peeling it. However, this is when I started noticing that something wasn't quite right. Usually when you get to this part, you can see the difference in the glass right away and I thought it might be different because the glass was still wet so I thought that by drying it it might show up but nope it just I don't know what it was maybe it's a non-etching glass you can kind of see the design if it's either wet or it has like steam over it so I guess that it could be like a, a hidden feature of the mug that you can only see it if it's two very drastically different temperatures but I just find it so funny that this whole project was just womp womp so let's go to the next one just to make ourselves a little bit happier for the next one we have a family portrait I have a pooch is the best boy ever and he's a Britney Spaniel so I thought of making a family portrait with all of us and because they are dogs it only makes sense to have our pooch be part of the family portrait he would be in the first place but it would be funny it, it would be cuter if he was just one of us so he's depicted as my oldest son because that's what he is he's my first now let's take a time to appreciate this really cool pencil sharpener. You put it as a cap to keep your pencil sharpened in your pencil case and then if you need to sharpen it you just like flip this thing over here and then doo -doo -doo, it works as a pencil sharpener. It's really cool right? For the layout of this portrait I decided to use a classic Gila family portrait that you see in any promotional item but reskin it for the type of pooch that I have. And I tried using the Da Vinci Eye app and I thought myself very clever for it. However, I think I did not secure the phone to a specific location. That made it all wonky. I, the, the top part was fine, but the bottom part started to get a little bit skewed. I was a bit frustrated at the whole thing. So I just painted it on top of it and decided to start again. I know you noticed this from before, but I decided to go the cry cut rat on this one. So I outlined the design on my iPad and then I used the cry cut to cut it out from vinyl. And this one was really this one was really fun to do. This was a, a fun one to, to make. 
just because the negative space was bigger it was easier to to get out and so it was less frustrating than that little one and it has been really wonderful to work on different mediums for a creative outlet in this past week just doing the things that i know will make me happy just doing some sketching and some painting and some sculpting and some other types of being creative it has been a while since i've done crafty things like this so it was very fulfilling so i i had to use a new canvas just because for some reason the purple that i used just bled through the acrylic paint i don't ask me why i don't know the answer it just did once I had a new canvas, it was pristine and ready for the vinyl, I transferred it over and then just like a fine coloring page, I just had to fill in the, the blanks with the colors that I wanted. I know that the eyebrows on, on the cartoon are a little bit lighter than the regular code and I thought about doing that, but he's only two colors and I thought that this just worked just fine. Now for the next one, I went a little bit crazy. I was having so much fun with this one. It's been a while since I sculpted anything and there's something so, hmm, satisfying? There's something so satisfying about being able to have an idea, see it in your head in 3D and then make it happen in the real world. I spent so much time on this one because is the first time that I've sculpted in literally I think I think it might be a decade so my god I'm dating myself <laughs> yeah but it's been a long time since I've I've done anything with with sculpting so it took me a while to relearn all the the way things interact with one another and for my muscles to get used to the the motions or the movements but the ones I got in the zone, it was just like riding a bike. It reminded me so much of my childhood. I remember that one Christmas, was Christmas or birthday? I got two books about building characters and backgrounds with plasticine. Plasticine? Plastilina? I don't know how you say it in English. Anyhow, it just taught you how to do um, things from the very basics to more complex things. And it just, it just made the kid in me happy check him out he turned out so cute he's so darn adorable i look for reference but i haven't been able to find the back of hecuba and because of the design i think he's a pug so i'm gonna give him a little curly tail like buddy he's so adorable he's husband material noticed that I had a lot of leftovers so I decided why not try a smaller one so I did a smaller one and this one came out faster and way easier is just letting your brain learn the shapes and your muscles learned how to do those shapes and then it just comes easier the next time so I guess there's a, a good life lesson there somewhere this one became my favorite instantly as soon as i saw his little eyeballs looking slightly at different directions i knew that it was going to be my favorite look at him he's so cute <laughs> uh, i love him i love him so much so i put them to bake and while I was baking them, I noticed I still had some extra. So why stop there? So I tried making a smaller one with the leftover clay. And this one was a little bit challenging because sculpting smaller is just harder. But he came out so adorable. I spent even less time on this one and it turned out great. So I think I just took myself too seriously in the first one, but you you live and you learn, right? And I can't wait to show you this one. It's so adorable. It ended up being so cute. 
And at that point, it just became a challenge. After I did that one, I decided to see if I could do an even smaller one with the last little bit of polymer clay I had with those colors. And so I did the smallest Hecuba you've ever seen. And it turned out so derpy and cute. It is so tiny that the camp was having trouble focusing. Here they are. Here are the boys. And this one is still my favorite. He's just so cute. And then I think this one is my second favorite. And then the smallest little one. It, he's so derpy and so cute though. And if you made it to the end, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And thank you for watching. I'm planning on doing some more gnome themed shenanigans and I'm going to post that on my Insta if you're interested in that. Thank you so much again and see you next time. Bye.